Hello everyone, my name is Yin Yi. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of my research results during the summer. My research topic is mathematical models of polymer dynamics and self-avoiding walks. Professor Valada Sindora Vicius and Yuning Liu gave me great support during the process. First, what are we doing? In my research, I learned both continuous and discrete mathematical models of polymer dynamics. The continuous models concentrate on the dynamics of highly flexible polymeric liquids in the equilibrium state. They are the random flight models, the Gauss chain, and the excluded volume chain. The discrete models are simple random walks and self-avoiding walks. Only the random flight models will be explained in detail later due to the limitation of time. So what's the point of my research and why are we interested in it? Polymers play an essential and ubiquitous role in our daily life. They range from macromolecular polymer material, for example synthetic plastics and synthetic rubber, which replace some metallic materials and become more and more significant in our modern society, to natural biopolymers such as DNA and proteins that build up the fundamental biological structure and function of our bodies. Thus, learning polymers properties from the molecular point of view through observing their microscopic behaviors becomes important. Among various dynamical properties of polymeric liquids, the viscoelasticity is one of the most special and useful characteristics compared to other normal liquids. For example, egg white has not only the fluidity like normal liquids such as water, but also a viscosity similar to glue. Viscoelasticity shows both viscous and elasticity when the object is deformed. Due to this essential property that polymeric liquids have, our research becomes meaningful. Now, here comes the important part. How do we come up with the models? Since the amount of monomers in one polymer is huge, polymer's real size remains the same if one adds another monomer to the polymer. Due to this independency relation between polymer's size and their monomers, the energy required in the polymerization process for marginal individuals are almost identical when the chain is long enough. So we can treat polymeric liquids as interacting macromoleculars except for liquid benzene and the main cause of the viscoelasticity as the intensity of interactions between them. Because of this macromolecular behavior of polymers, the effects of interactions can be added up independently unlike normal liquids because each normal liquid molecular has much less neighbors than polymers. Here we can see that polymers have lots of neighbors while normal liquids only have a few. Hence, for polymeric liquids, we can learn the mean property of the whole system only by justifying individual molecular's property. This coelasticity can be evaluated by figuring out the difference between the fully spread size of the polymer and the actual size of it in solutions. Hence, figuring out the relationship between these two sizes is the main point of our models. So now we are going to see the very basic continuous models for polymeric liquids, the random flight models. Highly flexible polymers can have thousands of configurations and the conformation of them will change continuously because the chemical bonds have the ability to rotate. So it is impossible for us to know a specific shape of polymer at a specific moment. However, we can predict the shape of a polymer statistically. Here, we are going to discuss the statistical property of a single polymer in the equilibrium state. The freely jointed chain is the most basic model of a single polymeric liquid molecular. In this model, we have three assumptions. We consider the polymer is a monomeric polymer, the rotations of chemical bonds are totally free, and we ignore the long-range interactions between them. Here, we need to address that long means the distance along the chain. So now, from these three assumptions, we can build a model. In order to figure out the actual size of the polymer, we need to know the conformation of this chain. The conformation is represented by the position vector capital Rn, which tells us where the subunits are, or the bond vectors small rn which tells where the bonds are. And the bond vectors can be obtained by the position vectors like this. 
Due to the randomness of the bound vector, the mean value of small rn is zero. We use angle brackets to denote the mean value. Also, from the independency of the bound vectors, we know that the mean value of the interaction between a bound to another is zero. So now we can see how does our model look like. After knowing these basic notations, we are getting familiar with this freely jointed chain. So now we're going to think about which parameter can represent the actual size of the chain. And this parameter should also have the relations of the fully spread length. The first parameter we think about is the end-to-end -end vector R, which is drawn in red in the picture. This vector represents how the configuration like in large scale. The end-to-end -end vector can be calculated by adding up the bound vectors. However, as we mentioned just now, the randomness of the bound vector causes the mean value of this end-to-end -end vector is zero and cannot be used to characterize the size of the chain. So now we consider the mean square of the end-to-end -end vector and find out that it has a finite value. According to the definition, the mean square of the end-to-end -end vector equals to this. And due to the independence of bound vectors, the bracket here equals to zero. So the whole equation equal the first sum equal to mb0 square. So now we obtain the characteristic length r bar, which is proportional to square root n. So in this freely jointed chain, we know that if we have a chain that has n links, the size we expect to get is proportional to square root n. The part we lose is because of the randomness and independency of the bound vectors. Now we are going to see the next continuous model, the freely rotating chain. In reality, the chemical bonds are not formed fully independently. The closer that the chemical bonds locate, the bigger effect that they will influence each other. So for the freely rotating chain, the local structure of the polymer have been fixed. So our freely rotating chain is like this. The nth bound is connected to the n minus 1th bound with a fixed angle theta and can rotate freely around the n minus 1th bound. With a set of bound vectors whose local structures has been fixed, the mean position of the nth bound is expected to locate along the n minus 1th bound with length cosine theta of it. To simplify the expression, we assume that there are k links between the nth and mth bound. So the interactions between the nth and mth bound can be expressed by the dependency of each other. For the freely rotating chain, the mean square of the end-to-end -end vector can be calculated as follows. Since n is large enough, we can rewrite the sum like this and use the geometry series. So finally, we get mv0 square, 1 plus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. For this freely rotating chain, we notice that not all the bound lengths are contributed to the size of the polymer. We call the part that contributes to the whole system size the effective bound length denoted by b. Again, we obtain the same relation r bar is proportional to the square root of n. So for the random flight models, we get r bar proportional to the square root of n. In order to have a good grasp of the global property of polymers, we introduce another parameter, the distribution function of the end-to-end -end vector phi r n. This denotes the probability distribution function of a chain with n links and its end-to-end -end vector is r. This function gives us a great way to study the global properties of polymers because it has nothing to do with the polymer's local structures. So now we are going to improve our model by studying the statistical distribution of the end-to-end -end vector of the random flight models. First, let's see the expression of phi r n. Here, psi of small r n represents the conformational distribution of the polymer and it depends on the position of each bound vector small rn. So we use integral rn to let the function psi lose the information of rns so that we cannot tell the local structure of the polymer. However, we need to add a delta function here to make sure that the end-to-end -end vector is r. Now, after knowing the expression of phi rn, we begin to transform this identity and see what we can get. By using the inverse Fourier transform of 1, we can rewrite the equation like this. And now we are going to see psi r rn in the equation. For freely jointed chain, the conformational distribution of the polymer psi rn equals the product of phi rn, where phi rn denotes the distribution function of the bound vectors. Since the bound vector can fully rotate on the surface of a sphere whose radius is b0, the distribution of it is the point on the surface of a sphere divided by the total surface area of the sphere. Then our distribution function of the end-to-end -end vector for the freely jointed chain becomes this. 
So now the first part of the equation is determined. The only thing we don't know is the second part because of the distribution function of bound vector phi. As we mentioned before, phi can be expressed like this. And since r can only be b0 in this situation, we can simplify the integral in r3 into the sphere surface integral in r2 like this. Then we can use the polar coordinates in r3 to simplify the surface integral ds with alpha from 0 to 2 pi, beta from 0 to pi. And also because of the perfect symmetrical property of the sphere, we can assume that the vector k as the z-axis as always. So here vector k b0 can be rewritten as the scalar k b0 cosine beta. Let cosine beta equals to u, and finally by using Euler's formula, we get a quite simple expression sine kb0 over kb0. For the fraction, e to the minus nkb0 squared over 6 is a good approximation of sine kb0 over kb0 to the power n. Then our distribution function of the n to n vector phi r n can be approximated by this. And it's good to see that the integral over k is a standard Gauss integral. So finally, we get the distribution function for freely jointed chain is Gaussian. Having been done with the freely jointed chain, it is much easier for us to see the distribution function for the freely rotating chain. First, let's see the conformation or distribution of a freely rotating chain. Since the effects between bonds depend on their distance along the chain, the polymer's conformation depends on each set of chemical bonds that are close to each other along the chain, let's say from M to N. Though the freely rotating chain has a required local structures, it can be regarded as a freely jointed chain because we are not caring about the local structures, and here N is large enough. So for a freely rotating chain, we can divide the chain into n tilde subsections, and each subsection contains k links, so that the n to n vector of each subsection rotation can be treated as independently. As we see in the figure, all the orange lines can be think as a freely jointed chain. By changing n into n tilde k, b0 into b, repeating the steps for freely jointed chain, we get phi r n equals this. Again, it's Gaussian. Hence, for random flight models, the distribution of the n to n vector is Gaussian. Then we can use this basic property to improve our models. Here are the references, and thanks for watching.